Okay, fans, I'm going to take you to the final resting place of Ernest Frederick Morrison, who played Sunshine Sammy or Booker T or Narcissus in uh, all the early films of uh, Harold Lloyd and a guy named Snub Pollard in the early 1920s, late, late teen era. So let me fo follow me. Okay, uh, I'm a big fan of the R Gang, especially the silent films because of this kid. And I'm at Inglewood Cemetery at 720 East Florence and he's in the Capistrano Gardens, pretty much right in the front, on the front wall, in, towards the middle. And this kid, he never got re very much recognition other than the fact that he was well paid as a kid. And he was he was a he had a starring role for years through the 20s and the 30s until the East Side Kids and then the war started. But this guy, this poor kid, he had this this kid. He was a great little actor. In fact, there's a couple of firsts with him. I just want to say, which is pretty pretty sad. He has no recognition. But what he, this kid did for American blacks in this country, he was the, the first black American to get signed to a long-term contract in Hollywood. Here he is. God bless him. Ernest Frederick Morrison. He died at 76 from cancer in Linwood, California. And I asked the lady, what's up with the plaques? She said that, that just means that, I, I said, did he get cremated? And she goes, no, that just means he's buried where he can't be visited for whatever reason. Actually below, I guess, this ground right here. But this guy, I mean, he was also the kid, Bruno. If you're at all familiar with the Eastside Kids, the Dead End Kids, and it was the Eastside Kids, and then the Bowery Boys. He said after the war, when he came back, they wanted to set him up in that as uh, Scruno again, and he said he didn't like the setup, quote unquote. And like I said, he's right here at the entrance, right off Florence, on the northern entrance. And uh, if you're if you're at all interested, uh, there's a lot of famous uh, uh, musicians that are buried here. A lot of movie black movie stars, Ray Charles. And this kid, I just want to say, I don't understand why he gets no recognition. Him and the, of course, all the trailblazers from the 20s and 30s step and fetch it. They don't get, he doesn't get credit. But what was he going to do? What was he, what could he do? What kind of job could he get in? How many blacks in that time made six figures and made a good, great, honest living as a, in a starring role in Hollywood? This kid was a trailblazer for all American blacks. God bless him wherever he's at. May he rest in peace. And if I was a rich black actor or actress in Hollywood, I myself, I would build a, uh, a museum to black actors and I would put a statue of this eternal, youthful child star in the front. Because he got absolutely, this kid, he was the numero uno. So I want the world to know that. That's why I'm here and documenting where his final resting place is. Sagittarius, signifying youth, and then what, what are the odds, how, how ironic that he'll always represent youth. And uh, he was 76 years old, and when he first got signed, uh, he was an infant, and this kid that was playing a, obviously a baby role, he wouldn't stop crying and bawling. So they asked uh, his father to bring his newborn kid, who was Ernie, to the lot. And he brought the kid, uh, Ernie, to the lot. And then for appreciation of what he did on the film, the crew christened him Sunshine. And then his dad ad added the Sammy later. And uh, he was the first kid, like I said, signed to a long-term, first black, uh, to a long-term movie contract. And then he was in 28 R Gang, two reeler shorts. And that was from 1922 to 1924, and he was the oldest kid, and he was the first kid recruited for the R Gang series. And then he got tired of the setup, in the words of Ernie, and then he ended up going to Vaudeville throughout the 30s until the East Side Kids started with, with uh, Leo Gorsi and Hunts Hall, and they casted him as a character named Scruno. And uh, 
he was on that show I think that was like 19 let me see here it was uh, not too long of a series 1940 well, yeah 1940 or 1945 but he he ended up getting drafted in World War II so when he came back in 1946 uh, Leo Gorsi had quit monogram for more money and then him and his brother and I think uh, the other guy Tommy Jordan I forgot his name uh, they set up their own company to start the Bowery Boys and they wanted Ernie to be uh, Scruno again he said no way man I don't like the setup and according to Leo Gorsi uh, they said that Ernie made very good money working as working as an aircraft assembler through the 40s and 50s until he retired and I heard I heard tell that he, he would show up at a few our gang uh, uh, you know gatherings for the kids that were in the early uh, our gang series he would show up at some of those conventions and uh, thanks to him I loved them I loved mostly the the, the the 1920s uh, silent films because in here in Southern California in the 60s it's they, all so they showed in the morning and they showed a lot of the R gang but mostly the uh, the, the uh, silent films and I totally I, I totally connected with that whole area I love the clothes the cars the whole the way everything looked and I love Jackie Condon Mickey Daniels Joe Cobb Alan Hoskins who was Farina the other black kid who also he, he played, he actually played, he was supposed to be a little girl in the series until they turned him into a boy and he was, he was our Ernie's uh, brother or sister at first and then Ernie's brother and then, and then Farina took over about 1929 from, uh, from Ernie and uh, no actually no he was more like when, when, uh, when uh, Ernie quit in 1924, Farina was always there but then he'd grow up and then he took the role like they used to well actually he was playing the same role that he played before but he was the only black kid let's just say that and then thanks to Jack Davis Mary Cornman and of course we can't forget Dino the Mule so here here we are and this is I'm just want to upload this to the world give this kid recognition this man who grew up into a wonderful polite man and from all accounts he was just a nice nice gentleman nice guy and uh, the, the, the laughs the happiness he brought to the world and I I, I want to say that I filmed uh, where Ernie used to film with uh, Harold Lloyd in the early silence from 1919 on Motor Avenue in Culver City they used to call that palms and if you see a lot of Harold Lloyd or our gang they always say it always says palms drugstore palms railroad say well that was all filmed right there on Motor Avenue in Culver City or West LA so I filmed that and he like I said he used to star in a lot of films with uh, uh, Harold Lloyd and a guy named Snub Pollard and he was considered what they his role was always a Patinsky he's always butting in and I just saw this film the other day with Harold Lloyd and he had his his Model T contact right there in Motor Avenue and then up up, con up comes Ernie acting as the, the as usual the Patinsky Okay, and he's buried here at, in the Capistrano Gardens on this, and here's his, and his plaque is, like I said, in this wall as you drive in on the north entrance, if you're at all interested. And he did the Dare Rigger 1970s TV shows. Uh, he did uh, the Jeffersons, and then he was in Good Times. And uh, so that was like, I guess, supplemental money for the blacks from the 20s and 30s they would all star in those shows okay uh, so I just want to say thank you Ernie and all the sunshine you gave me and millions of other children and may you be in a better place and I know the angels adore you good night sweet prince